G'day ladies and gents, loyalists and heretics and all you filthy Xenos scum out there, welcome to Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. Yes, I've been waiting for this one for a long time. The Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 Beta 1 is now available and will continue to be available until the 12th of December. So this beta is the first time that players have had a chance to look at the new gameplay features of Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 and seeing exactly how it's been improved or changed. And there has been a few changes. But first things first, the background for today's video. I am playing as the Imperial Fleet. I am specifically playing as Battlefleet Gothic. Our opponent in this particular battle is the Forces of Chaos. It's a 1,200 point battle. And this is a control point battle. There are five control points spread across the map. We have to control the majority of them until we either reach the points threshold or until we annihilate all of the chaos forces on the map. Now, during the deployment phase, I've split my fleet into three groups. Two Firestorm frigates going for one of the middle cap points, my battleship, Retribution class, and my Gothic class, Cruiser, to go for the closest cap point and then move up the center of the map, while my two Grand Cruisers, an Avenger and an Exorcist, along with the battlecruiser Mars, head for the middle left-hand side cap point. The idea here is the two frigates are going to just try and distract and split up enemy forces, while the main force stays fairly close together, takes two cap points of their own, and then gets ready to defend hard against Chaos forces. So, first things first, graphics. Holy shoot. The original game looked absolutely fantastic. It really did but the detail they've put into the models for the ships this time is something to behold. It doesn't matter how far you zoom in, they still look fantastic. And I think they've changed the color palette a little bit here too. They the almost look like painted models, area. which is perfect in my opinion for what the game is supposed to represent. But speaking of that, I am probably getting a little bit ahead of myself here. What the hell is Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2? Well, I assume most people here will have at least a passing familiarity with the Warhammer 40,000 universe, at the very least through games like Dawn of War and Space Marine, if not directly through the game's workshop tabletop, and of course the immense, complicated, and sometimes daunting amount of lore that exists for this universe. Well, the majority of those games are based on the ground battles that take place on planets throughout the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Battlefleet Gothic is the space battles that happen above these worlds. The original tabletop game by Games Workshop started as a niche spin-off and never really developed much beyond that, although it was immensely popular amongst those who played it. Battlefleet Gothic Armada and Armada 2 were the attempt to recreate that tabletop game on PC, attempting to keep as many of the original rules, abilities and special features that made that game what it was intact, while also rebalancing it in such a way that it would work in a real-time environment. And we have just made contact with Chaos Forces, and he is a brave one, and here is one of the things that I absolutely love about the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Ship ramming is very, very much a thing. I'm just going to keep pushing him until his ship splits in half. There we go, that's what I wanted to see, and his wreck is going to slam into the other ship, while my Grand Cruiser and my Battle Cruiser flank around the sides, continuing to put on the pain, and as soon as those shields are down, we're going to drop a boarding party at point blank range directly onto it and start ripping apart its internals. This is why you don't rush into battle against the Imperial Fleet. But anyways, as I was saying, because the game is based on the original tabletop, it plays on a 2D plane. The map itself is generally just a large grid with a bunch of features that are randomly placed across the map. These features are essentially recreations of the original templates that would operate as environmental features in the original tabletop. And these can be gas clouds, which you can hide your ships inside and they will be undetectable, asteroid fields, mine fields, and so on. The overall basic gameplay is very similar to the original Battlefleet Gothic, however it is much, much smoother. A lot more optimization has been done, there has obviously been improvements to the engine. It just looks better and plays better. There has been some other changes in other areas. For a start, the original Battlefleet Gothic game was based entirely around the Black Crusade versus Abbott on the Despoiler and the Battle for Cadia. 
This meant there was only one campaign to play, it was for the Imperial Forces, and the entire focus of the game was really around the Imperial Forces versus Chaos Forces, fighting out in the Gothic Sector. Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, however, is based in the new expansion to the Warhammer 40k universe, known as the Gathering Storm, where Cadia has fallen and a warp rift has split the entire galaxy in half, allowing Chaos Forces to flood the galaxy from pretty much any location that they choose. This means all of the major factions are actually on the table this time, so the Empire is present along with its subsidiary fleets such as Battlefleet Gothic or Battlefleet Solar, the Adeptus Astartes, the Space Marine fleets are present along with the Adeptus Mechanicus fleets, the Eldar, the Dark Eldar, the Orcs, the Tau Military and Merchant factions, along with the Necrons and the Tyranids, and these two actually have a major part to play in the game. There are actually three campaigns in Armada 2, with the Empire obviously being the main one, but the Necrons and Tyranids both getting a campaign as well. Now, as this is a beta, the campaigns themselves are not available to play at this time, although you can play the prologue of the Empire campaign. It serves as a tutorial to teach you the new functions within the game, and also sets the storyline for Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. Now, the prologue is fully cutscened and voice acted, and is pretty well done, although there is a couple of little issues I did spot here and there, and... Well, the voice actor for the Space Wolf Commander is... A touch soft for a son of Fenris, I think. I was expecting something a little bit more gruff, rather than... Thank you, computer. Rather than the rather soft-spoken voice actor that they actually got to play the role. I may put the prologue up at channel at some point, if I can work out how to turn off the tutorial elements and just be able to play through it, because it is pretty interesting. So, other major changes that I've noticed, or well, the big one was in the skirmish and multiplayer battles at this time. In the original Battlefleet Gothic, you would essentially build a fleet of brand new ships, and as they survived battles, they would earn experience and you would be able to equip new weapons to them, customize them slightly, and eventually add new special abilities and upgrades to them, building a more and more powerful fleet. It seems that has gone by the wayside, or at least it has in the beta at this point. As it currently stands, there is no leveling for your ships, and if you lose them, it doesn't really matter. You can put together a fleet of up to 1,200 points, and when you select your fleet and select your ships, you then get the option to select up to two special abilities and two upgrades that are applied universally across all of your ships. Now, the downside of this is there, at least at the moment, doesn't appear to be any progression gameplay in the multiplayer like there was in the first game, which is a shame, because that was actually a really cool feature. You got attached to your ships, because if you lost one in a match, that ship was lost permanently. You had to purchase a new ship and you would have to start leveling it again from scratch. Which of course meant in the multiplayer, if you were running into a battle that you clearly weren't going to win, it gave you a reason to warp your ships out, withdraw and just surrender the match to your opponent. The upside of this was that this particular system did cause a problem when there are a low number of players that were actually playing the multiplayer at any given time, and you could often find, if you had a fleet that was relatively low level, getting yourself matched against players that were significantly more powerful than you were, with much more in the way of upgrades, and they would roll you as a result. Since everybody now has essentially the same level upgrades, the same level ships, and the same level special abilities, that is no longer a problem in the multiplayer. But I do feel it has lost something as a result of this change. Some of the faction themed artwork is also missing from the UI now as well, which is a little bit of a shame, but I will admit the UI is now much cleaner. The menu systems now are also a lot more slick as well. Whether you think this change is a good thing or a bad thing is definitely personal choice. I don't really mind either way, but I wouldn't mind seeing the original artwork back, or at least the artwork that exists now, adjusted to be a little bit more reflective of each of the individual factions. That being said, it is worth mentioning that this beta is an actual beta, not just an early access version of the game for people to play around with. The developers have been very clear in stating that the thing is not finished yet at this point in time, they are still making final adjustments to it, there are still bugs and there are still changes that need to be made prior to release, which is why the release has been pushed back to the 27th of January at this point. Now, on the bugs, there most certainly have been a few. Uh, the game will sometimes crash during launch, 
Uh, it doesn't happen all that often on my end, but it most certainly does happen. While going through the menus is cleaner and slicker, as I mentioned a moment ago, sometimes going through the menus and then going back will cause certain buttons to grey out and not be selectable. If this happens, you have to close the game completely and reboot it back in in order to get these buttons to function again so you can get into the sub-menus or to start sections of the game. In particular, this tends to happen around the prologue campaign for the tutorial, and will occasionally happen if flicking back and forth between skirmish and multiplayer options. They will sometimes grey out as well. And in one situation, and it's only happened once, I did try and spawn a Necron fleet in for a battle, and upon reaching the deployment phase, found myself with no ships to deploy. But as I said, this is a proper beta, so bugs are to be expected. If you're not happy with bugs, it's probably not worth downloading and playing the game at this point. 27th of January is the release date at this point in time, that's when the game's coming out, so that's when you'll download it, and hopefully it will be bug free by then. I know, generally most games nowadays aren't, but at least hopefully the major ones will be sorted out, and maybe we'll get lucky. So that's where Beta 1 of Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 is sitting at this point. I will say I've been having a lot of fun with the battles, I wasn't kidding when I said they play a lot smoother and a lot nicer than the original ones. The original game felt a little clunky in the way the ships operated. This is much, much nice to control. Everything feels much more responsive than it did previously. And obviously, visually, it looks great. My only major complaint with the beta at this point in time is exactly the same complaint that I had with the original Battlefleet Gothic Armada. In order to bring players closer to the battles and make the battles far more personal, they've limited how far you can zoom the camera out. This prevents you from being able to see a good angle of the entire battlefield at any given time. Now, I do understand why they did this. One, to drag the players into the battle so you can actually get in close to the fighting as it was actually happening, and also to limit that situational awareness so it's possible for players to surprise one another rather than being able to see all things at all times, as you would with map pointed out. That being said, at least in the single player battles and skirmishes, I would at the very least like the option, even if it was an option in the menu setting to allow for a zoomed out camera in single play. I can most certainly see them disabling it permanently in the multiplayer, but the option for the single player would be nice. Outside of that, the game is incredibly fun. I've been enjoying all the factions. So far, the factions all seem to be relatively well balanced straight out of the box for a first beta. I was expecting some of the more powerful races to, well, be a little overwhelming straight off the bat. The Necrons in particular are specialist builds of the Eldar fleet with Lancers and, of course, uh, the Chaos fleet, which was, in Battlefleet Gothic 1, my primary fleet. In particular, I had a fleet build focused entirely around carriers and long-range bombers. Uh, using the ships to kite and hitting the targets from extreme range, which was incredibly effective if done right. This does still work in Battlefleet Gothic 2, but it requires a little bit more effort, which I'm actually not against. Anyways, ladies and gents, this has been my brief look at Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2. I will have some more Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2 on the channel over the next few days. I'm planning on putting up at least one battle from each of the different factions that are currently available so you can check out all the new fleets. And until next time, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more. And as always, burn the heretic, purge the Xenos, and praise the Emperor. I prefer honored guests.